The Aviators was made possible by... When the unexpected happens, the Lifesaver provides one hour of emergency attitude reference, giving you the time you need to land safely. In a mission's darkest moment, trust Mid-Continent Instruments. Now for the first time on TV, the stories and reports of the people who fly and the aircraft they fly. And you are invited in an exciting, pulse-pumping new television series designed for everyone who has ever gazed skywards and dreamt of slipping the bonds of Earth. The Aviators. This week on The Aviators, we take a look at charter aviation. We check out some of the newest and coolest in affordable helicopters. We get an inside look at the 2009 Cross Canada Century Flight. So everyone is so terrifically excited about this. And we get to meet legendary air show pilot Julie Clark. I'm going to show you an engine that you'll probably never see again. From the Boundary Bay Airport, this is The Aviators. One of the fastest growing segments of the amateur built aircraft movement is the home built helicopter segment. These aircraft represent fantastic value when compared to their factory counterparts. For between thirty dollars and $125,000, you can build and learn to fly your own personal helicopter. Helicopters can be an affordable way to get in the air. With their ability to hover and dart, they are far more maneuverable than their fixed-wing counterparts. And rotor-wing aircraft allow the pilot to see and go places few can imagine. While the range may be limited compared to a fixed-wing aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing allow these little flying machines to squeeze in and out of some tight quarters. You can buy these small helicopters either fully assembled or in kits that you assemble yourself. Either way, this segment of private aviation has one outstanding characteristic. They are very inexpensive to buy. This model is a Mosquito. It was built by its owner in about six months at a cost of $31,000. This aircraft fits within the ultralight category, which means you don't need either a license or registration to fly it. Its 65 horsepower engine will keep it in the air for about one hour on five gallons worth of gas. Being an ultralight, the Mosquito's speed and range are limited at only 80 miles per hour for the speed and 60 miles for the range. The idea with an ultralight helicopter like this is not to go far, but to enjoy the thrill of the flight. Going low and slow, the Mosquito allows you to buzz around an airfield while feeling the elements whip through the open cockpit. The Mosquito's modest windshield does provide some protection and could be considered luxurious when compared to other ultralights such as home-built gyroplanes. Home-built gyroplanes are popular experimental craft. On a gyroplane, the top rotor is unpowered. A rear-facing propeller provides thrust, resulting in lift and causing the top rotor to auto-rotate. This unique way of flying allows gyroplanes to do some dramatic touch-and-goes. Unfortunately, with both the Mosquito and most home-built gyros, there's no space for passengers. So while you may get to enjoy the Earth in a unique way, you do so alone. For those looking to enjoy helicopters outside the ultralight market, there are other home builds that also accommodate passengers. BJ Schramm founded the home built helicopter movement when he started Rotorway International in 1967. The company's latest offering, this slick E600 Talon, is sold in kit form and includes everything you need to get in the air, including the engine and the engine instruments. This particular helicopter will carry two people at 100 miles an hour while burning eight gallons of fuel per hour. One of the things unique to Rotorway is not only do they sell aircraft kits, they'll also teach you how to fly your helicopter and how to maintain an E600 Talon. While Rotorway is the oldest of the home-built helicopter kit companies, there is no shortage of up-and-coming kit builders. Canadian Home Rotors offers this helicopter kit called a Safari. Al Rolton won Grand Champion Rotorcraft at AirVenture in 2008 with his machine. Al, tell us about some of the features that come from certified helicopters that are used in this home-built machine. Well, certainly the most important thing would be the engine. It's a certified engine, whether it's a Lycoming or a Superior engine. This is also the 360, so 180 horsepower, so there's lots of extra power in there. It's shaft-driven, everything's, there's no belts to slippage, anything like that. It's, uh, it's very reliable, very safe, very easy to maintain and inspect, which is hugely important. Quick walk around and you can see everything. There's nothing, nothing hidden, nothing to be removed. We're all very happy with it so far. Excellent. So let's take a tour of what we're looking at here. We've got the engine. Yes, correct. And then up above that? Well, this is the clutch. 
Um, basically, as you as you spool up the, the engine, the blades will slowly engage. It's got a fan system that blows down all the air down through and cools off the engine. That's obviously the transmission sitting up top to, to everything solid. It's a very well-built rotor head system, very strong. It's handling all anything we need it to do very, very nicely. Very nice. The beauty of a home-built aircraft is that you can customize it in ways not possible with a factory aircraft. From custom interiors to chromed fuel tanks, no two safaris look alike. Building your own helicopter can be a significant investment in time, however. Now you won an award because you did a great job putting this helicopter together. What's it like to build a helicopter and how long does it take? It was, uh, well, I, I was a little under three years when I built it the first time. Some guys are able to build them uh, in, in under a year. If you've built one before, it's much quicker. But it's not that overwhelming. It's just one piece at a time. Um, mine took a little longer because I got a few more bells and whistles on it than maybe someone else might put on. But most of them are just bling bling. They're still the basic helicopter when you put them side by side. Now this helicopter has two seats, so how do you use it? Uh, strictly in a recreational standpoint, I fly with buddies, I fly with family members. Uh, we go to small airports around where I live and uh, visit other people and other helicopter people and it's just a lot of fun that way. I've got about two hours range so I, I can get quite far if I need to on it. And average speed, it cruises between 70 and 80 miles an hour very comfortably all day long you can do that. Um, very easy to control, I'm very happy with the, with the performance of it. The Safari with its large front bubble has fantastic visibility allowing the pilot and passengers to see every everything around them. Al gave us a closer look inside this bubble and the Safari's rugged controls. So we can see the control stick, the cyclic yep. stick, the collective and the yep. anti-torque. Do you want to explain how those work when you okay. fly? Okay. This is your cyclic and this is would be, uh, I want to go forward, I push forward, I want to go back, I, I back. And to turn the helicopter, I just move the controls either way, right or left. If I want to go up or down, this is what changes the pitch length. As I pull up, it increases the, the pitch of the blades and I go up. This is my throttle. As I give it more pitch, I have to give it more gas, just like a car. You want to go faster, you have to put in the gas. These are my anti-torque pedals. The only reason they're there is to is take away the torque that your main blade is. It goes one way. If those blades weren't there, your helicopter would continue to turn. So they put the, the tail rotor blades on and it helps bring it around so you can control it. Basically like a rudder on an airplane and what really makes a helicopter so maneuverable close to the ground. That is fantastic. Now if a viewer was interested in, in uh, learning to fly a helicopter, how would they go about that? Uh, local airport, I personally took the training on the R-22. I find it's the closest performance wise. Uh, we Same engine, same horsepower, so that's my recommendation. It's a much smaller helicopter, so when you're in this, it's, it's quite a surprise how much room you have when you're in this one. But it's by far the best one to take your training on, I found personally. Well, thanks very much, Al, for showing us around your okay. helicopter. We can't wait to see what it looks like flying now. All right, very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The Aviators, for everyone who has ever gazed skywards. For more information on today's segments, visit www.theaviators.tv.